start from the ground up. Let's take you through the night. You know, you start out the night. We go down 0-2 early. Tugugov lost the first fight. Uh, looked like he got robbed to me, but it is what it is. And then we go on a four-fight win streak with Luke Boomy, Jenkins, Malarkey, and Rodriguez. And then things are looking great. Things are looking great. And then Josh Kulabayo, uh stuns Melsic Bagdasarian. So this one looks like we're going to go to five and two. Things take a turn for the worse. Oh. Kulabayo, Kulabayo nearly connecting. Oh, and Bagdasarian goes down. He gets it the back right away. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he's got it in. He's got it locked. Kulabayo, what a comeback this will be. Melsic Bagdasarian in serious trouble here. And he taps, and that's it. Come on, man. Dang. Shoot, I got to check that one off as a loss. Man, Kulabayo jumps on top of the cage. He's pumped up. And after four predictions in a row, this one comes wrong. Oh, so we're no. back to four and three. Oh, no. Oh, ah, oh, no. Oh, no. And Kulabayo is getting beat, dominated in round one. And all of a sudden, in a matter of five seconds, he flips the script and this fight's over. So credit Kulabayo with the win here at UFC 2. 84. So instead of five and two, now we're four and three. We get into Tyson Pedro next. He falls. Now we're four and four. And now we're in trouble because the main card is very tough and could go either way. Then Jimmy Croup battles to a draw. Mainly because Randy Brown got a point deducted. Or not Randy Brown, but his opponent. So then we're four, four, and one. Heading into Parker Porter. Check this out for Justin Taffa. So as we begin here with Taffa versus uh, Porter. You got a lot of experience between the two. Tafa's a big boy. He's the home crowd favorite. Porter's a big boy. He's trying to walk in here and get the job done. So we'll see what happens. Here we go. This thing's about ready to kick off round one. As everyone works their way out, they're going to close the cage door and it's on. Come on, Porter. Don't let me down. Need a winning record for these final three fights. Here we go. Top of taking control of the center. And it's Porter who's doing more moving on the outside. And Tapa clearly likes to move, constantly bouncing the legs. And both guys got power. All right, here we go, Porter. Left-right combination with a leg kick to finish. When they, when they get inside, Tapa has an advantage there. As he kind of shoves Porter off. Oh! And that's it. Tafa wins it. He's dancing in the center of the octagon. Oh, my goodness. No. No. And Porter goes down. It's over. Fast. And I don't think Porter understands what happened here, but we have to Okay, so we start out 0-2, then we went four in a row, we're four and two. Things are looking good like we're going to get to 5-2, and two, but instead, we go 0-3 and 1 over the next four. Now we're down to four, we're at 4-5 and 1, heading into Madalena versus Randy Brown, and anything could happen here. We got Jack Madalena winning this fight. Let's see what happens. And it's clearly a problem for De La Madalena. The, the reach is clearly a problem, first two minutes in. Oh, here comes Madalena. Oh, Randy Brown goes down. Oh, and he's in trouble. Look at Madalena on top. Boy, Madalena's really going for it here. Oh wow, he's got the he's got the back. Randy Brown's in trouble and he taps. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Wow. Wow. 
Randy Brown can't believe it. It just took one shot. And then the rest was just a, a bunch more in 15 seconds. Nothing too crazy, but the fight had to be stopped and Randy Brown went down. And Randy Brown can't believe it. And you've seen that in Madalena's other fights. You know, but could he break through the reach? And yeah, the answer is yes, he did. He broke through the reach. And we'll see the replay. Okay, so Randy Brown ducks to right, stands up, takes another right, and that's when he goes down. And now he covers up immediately. And Randy, Randy Brown's in trouble there. And then Madalena just continues to pound away and then eventually gets the submission finish. Gets a tap from Randy Brown. Yeah, so that so, so that helped. So we're back to five, five, and one with two fights to go. So at this point, it's not going to be a great night. Maybe we can get to seven, five, and one. But in reality, even if we lose the next one, we just need Islam Mahachev to win uh, to keep us afloat, right? To keep you know we can have a bad night because we started out strong in the first three weeks. We can have a bad night, but still go to four zero in the main main event. So that's what we're looking at. But first, you got. Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett for the interim featherweight title. And this will become huge. Again, as we talked about throughout the week, this will become huge after the main event. But someone would be fighting Volkanovski if Islam Mahachev could beat him. This is how that went down. Okay, now Emmett gets a left hand free. Lands. Lands one. But Yair doing a good job fighting from the bottom. One minute left. So round two. Come on, Emmett. Oh, he's got an armbar attempt. Doesn't get it. Now he's got the triangle locked on Emmett. Oh, no. And Emmett's stuck in there. Not sure if he's got it locked in or not. And he taps. Josh Emmett taps. No. 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 And I don't know what Yair said to Josh Emmett at the end there, but... Man. Unbelievable. You know that hurt Josh Emmett. He had to tap there, but what a fight by both guys, and Yair gets to finish. Good. We didn't have to wait long on that. And Yair Rodriguez is the new interim featherweight champion. Yeah, so Yair Rodriguez is the interim featherweight champion. It's going to become large regardless of what happens in the next fight, but if Volkanovski falls, he'll fight Volkanovski next. And we're 5, 6, and 1. So now we're just hoping we get the main event correct. At the end of the day, we need to get Islam Mahachev right. And it was anything but an easy fight. I mean, this thing was back and forth throughout the entire main event. See, and Islam's got to time it up. I mean, it's much more difficult to take down a shorter guy, right? I mean, that's how it works. The shorter guys have the advantage with the takedowns. Oh, a big left by Volk. And he says, let's go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, when Volk drops Islam, Islam gets the leg, though. And here we go. Islam back on top. So the crowd goes crazy, but not for long. Because they know this is much different than round one. Because now Islam's got a whole round. Three minutes and 40 seconds to work with. Oh, big right drops Islam. And now Volk's on top. The final minute. Holy cow. That's probably going to give Volkanovski this round, man. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. And man, Volkanovski is going to finish on top swinging. And this fight is over. Unbelievable. Mark Goddard meets both in the center of the octagon. And we're going to get one of the most intriguing decisions in probably the sports history. 48-47, 48, 48 47, 49, 46. Ooh. And... Still champion. Wow, dude. That was scary, bro. <laughs> And the crowd's boom, but I think they know. I mean, what a great fight by Volkanovski. But Islam Mahachev is going to hold on to the belt. Wow, what a fight, man. What a fight. So Islam Mahachev is going to come out on top. He retained. And that's the way it goes. So 6-6-1 six, six and one on the night. Not great by any means. At least it wasn't a losing record. We'll take that. But we're 4-0 in the main event, and we'll definitely take that. Because that's where things, it's unbelievable, right? After starting last year 16-2 and two, 
it's a, you know it's going to be hard this year to get off to another good start. You got Sergey Spivak coming through. You got Islam Mahachev coming through, and uh, you know we'll take it. And when you look at the do list, Islam remains number two. Volkanovski fell to seven, but and I hated to do that, but he's going to go back into the featherweight division now and probably control that division for a while. You would think, but Yair Rodriguez will test him. Aljamain Sterling up to six, and that's basically it for uh, the changes there. And you look down at number 19, you got Bo Nickel. He'll be fighting Jamie Pickett at UFC 285. We'll get that fight prediction done today at some point. And, of course, Jesse Andrade stepping in this weekend on short notice against Aaron Blanchfield. So the do list uh, hasn't changed that much, just one flip. Sterling goes up uh, to number six. And you know he'll probably be fighting Henry Cejudo. But you look at the top five there, Hamza, Islam, John Jones, Colby, Yuri, Aljamain Sterling. And, and once Conor McGregor's date is announced, he'll be back in the top five for sure, probably number three. Just going to be real with you. And if Conor McGregor can win, uh, what do you say, pound for pound wafflers? Something like that. I mean, if Conor McGregor can win, the UFC is going to create a way for him to get a title shot. Please believe it. Please believe it. What's up? This is your boy, Chris Cross. Thanks for watching. Do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button in one of the links below. Then click on one of them clips up above and enjoy yourself. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. Peace.